No, I think it would be interesting to discuss the entire the, the, the circus of the it not it being ignored for six months after the legislature voted one forty seven to two in favor in the assembly and fifty nine to four in favor in the Senate. This was essentially the only bill of all the bills that were presented in twenty twenty two where there was no infighting between Democrats and Republicans. This had one of the highest rates of just rubber stamp, let's get this through, we all agree on this. 147 to 2, and it has not been pushed through. You know, one of the interesting things in the gubernatorial race was Kathy Holchel and a lot of the political advertising towards her were criticizing her competitor, and rightfully so, for saying that he doesn't respect democracy, he doesn't respect the results of an election. And, well, point taken, fair criticism. But now the question really should be asked, does she respect the results of her own people and her own legislature? Because if they vote 147 to 2 in favor in the Assembly and 59 to 4 in favor in the Senate, and she not only doesn't veto it, she just ignores it for six months, it kind of demonstrates that her own criticisms kind of ring hollow. It doesn't seem like she respects the results of her own democracy at this point. And I don't mind saying that on TV news. Again, I, I've, I've heard all the governor's criticisms of her opposition and absolutely fine, but let's see if she holds up to those principles herself. That was a short excerpt from a TV news interview I did over the right to repair bill in New York State, something that I was advocating for for about almost eight years now and has gotten virtually nowhere in spite of all the progress that we have made, which is incredibly, incredibly frustrating. This bill passed in the Senate 59 to 4. It passed in the Assembly 147 to 2. We had the FTC come out and explain in great detail why it is that most of the manufacturer's arguments against right to repair are junk. As it says over here, a quote from the report, the FTC concluded, there is scant evidence to support manufacturers' justifications for repair restrictions. It then encouraged state and federal legislatures to consider right to repair bills and hopefully pass relevant legislation soon. We had the White House sign an executive order pushing right to repair. Over here, it says, make it easier and cheaper to repair items you own by limiting manufacturers from barring self-repairs or third-party repairs of their products. In spite of all of this progress, this bill still sits on the desk of a governor that criticized their opposition for not respecting democracy. Fucking bullshit, man. Uh, like, I'm, I'm just going to come out and say it. This is absolute horseshit. This is not a bill that was like 51 to 49. This is not a bill that was 51 49 over some hard, insanely divisive issue that would take your rights away. This is something that passed 147 to 2, 59 to 4, that the FTC has said we want to see action on. The White House has said we want to see action on. Uh, the people have said they want to see action on. What the fuck? Like, I just don't, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I'm sick and tired of this bullshit that we do in politics where it's like, just sit down and be nice and don't be aggravated and don't get mad at the camera. I am going to get annoyed and I am going to yell at the camera. Really? 147 and 2. 59 and 4. It has been over six months. Not a word. Every single reason that these lobbyists have given has not only been retorted by the entire industry, by the community, by legislators, but by the effing FTC in an over 50 page document going over every single excuse that they give with a list of detailed citations. What more do you need? And if you're gonna, if you're gonna ignore it, can you at least, at least have the courtesy to say, I am vetoing it. Here is why I'm vetoing it. Here is the reason. Come out and say it. Come out and say it. Just don't, don't, don't have this suspenseful nonsense up until the end of the year. Just like attach your name to it. Attach your reasoning to it. Have some, well, I'm sorry, I was thinking of the name of my organization if it had an A at the end instead of an O. You get where I'm coming from here. Hopefully you get the idea. One last thing to mention and chill before I end the video, since I probably should do this more often. I do have two right to repair related nonprofits. We have Repair Preservation Group, which is a 501c3, and we have Repair Preservation Group Action Fund, which funds lobbying and all of these types of things. So we have all these types of guides that are created via Repair Preservation Group over here to try to get more people excited about repair and also able to do the work that I do on this channel. We have people con contributing to this and creating educational guides. We also have grassroots advocacy and engagement, which is really, really helpful when it comes to things like the FTC coming out with a 56 page report going over why the manufacturer is full of shit. This has really helped with things like getting that wheelchair bill passed in Colorado earlier in the year, getting this bill as far along as it did in New York State and in other states. And we are going to continue this work into the future. If you have an employer that is registered through Benevity or Black Boy Giving Fund or anything like that, or Target Grants, or I know JP Morgan has one, they actually do something with employee matching. So if you give $5 to 
my organization, I will get 10 bucks because your employer will give in $5 as well. Sometimes these programs actually make pretty funny trolls. One instance of this with Benevity is an employee of John Deere at one point donated money to Repair Preservation Group and John Deere actually matched their donation as you can see here. So there are numerous times where I've seen like Apple or John Deere on the name of a Benevity check, meaning that Apple or John Deere gave money to my organization so that I could advocate for right to repair around the country, which is actually very fun. And uh, something that I, 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 every single time I open one of these checks and I see like John Deere or Apple on it, I just kind of get a little kick and a smile as I write the deposit. Amazon Smile has something with Repair Preservation Group where when you buy something on Amazon via Amazon Smile, we will actually get a cut of the purchase, even if you have not paid more for it. So there's a lot of cool stuff like that. We also have a shilling donation page over here, which I probably should be making more use of since I've noticed from my comments recently that many people actually don't even know that Repair Preservation Group is my own organization. So I figured I'd mention that in this video. That's about it for today. Thank you very much for listening to me uh, rant, yell, and scream into the camera about my former governor. And uh, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And above all, thank you very much to everybody who has helped with this process, everybody who has contacted their local legislature, everybody who has spoken to their friends, family members, coworkers, and gotten them a little bit excited about repair, getting them to see why repair is important, why it matters. And above all, a large thank you to the first donor to Repair Preservation Group, who actually encouraged me to open a nonprofit and then gave a million dollars to it two years ago, Aaron Wolf at Futo, who is now my boss and employer. So Thank you very much for encouraging me to get more involved with all this stuff and to try to make a positive difference in the world. Also, before I forget, a big shout out to Destiny and his community for doing this a month ago. This comes from Forethought. Attention, Daliban. Operation Make a Governor Sign Legislation begins November 30th at 9 a.m. And they uh, he actually put all the details here, why it should be signed into law, gave the number, and... I, I am so incredibly appreciative of Destiny's community for this and for this getting 737 upvotes. That is really kind. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. But above all, Mr. Clinton also appreciates it. Don't you, Clinton? Good boy. Well, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.